then uh, commandment five, thou shall never use Excel. So this actually kind of goes hand in hand with commandment four, and even it goes hand in hand with not having an investment team. But basically, if you can figure it out in your head, so the investment process is, is really quite simple. You know, if, if a company, let's say has a market cap of a billion dollars, and let's say it's trading at uh, 20 times earnings. So it trailing earnings are 50 million, for example. And let's, uh, let's assume those are owner earnings that you can withdraw as dividends and such to keep it simple. Well, the, the billion dollar market cap, uh, whether, whether that is undervalued or overvalued or fairly valued, uh, one can only uh, make a judgment of that if one can figure out the cash flows that are coming out of the business over the next, I mean, it's from now to judgment day, but you can approximate that to be now uh, between now and the next 10 or 20 years, because after that, it really doesn't matter. The terminal values become too small. And uh, so if this business is trading at 20 times earnings, and if earnings are expected to grow at, let's say, 10 or 15% a year, then what you can do, and, and if you have a very high degree of conviction that that 10 or 15% rate of earnings growth is sustainable for a very long period of time, maybe 15 or 20 years. Um, then you can actually, you know, run the math. You can say, okay, year one, the earnings are 50 million, year two, the earnings are 60 million, year three, the earnings are, you know, I mean, if you're growing at 20%, but if you're growing at 10%, 50, 55, 60 and a half, you know, 66 and change, and just keep going from there. And, and then you have to discount each of those by your expected rate of return. You know, uh, so for example, if I, if I want a 20% rate of return on this investment, I have to start discounting those future cash flows uh, at that 20% at that rate. And then I have to, because if I'm getting 55 million a year from now, uh, my cost of capital is 20 million. So that 55 million is really worth like 44 million uh, because I'm not getting it today. And so as I discount all those future cash flows and, uh, and run those numbers, it will be very hard to get to 1 billion uh, because, because uh, you know, the earnings are growing at 10%, but your expectation is 20. So it will be a kind of a declining future stream. Every year will be less than 50 million in effect and um, uh, in present value. And, uh, and so the math just doesn't work. Now, if you reduce your return expectations to something like 8%, um, it may work. If you said, I only want a 7 or 8% return, that may work. But even then, the, there are some heroic assumptions. And we already saw what Templeton said, that you're going to be wrong one third of the time, and capitalism is brutal. So unless this is a fast-growing funeral services operation, uh, it's not going to be there clocking 20% or 10% a year for 15 years, uh, because it's just difficult in business uh, to have that much of a runway without people coming in to take your moat away. And so, so the thing is that, how do we get around that? Well, the, the, way, the way we get around that is by making the math really simple. And the way we make the math really simple is we go back to PEO1. And uh, when we go back to PEO1, all the math becomes really easy. Because then if I want to make like 25% a year, well, I, I get my money back in two or three years and I still have the business, it's still producing cash, and you'll find that it'll deliver that return. 
and it might deliver that return at a PE of two as well or three as well. And uh, but once you start getting to high single digits or double digits, uh, generally speaking, the math doesn't work so well. It's 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 a lot harder to make it work. And and I think like for example, uh, if if we were to look at, uh, I mean, I think uh, like a simple case is if we look at the uh, a business like Apple. So let's 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 take a simple case that Apple is worth exactly a trillion dollars. Uh, I, I haven't been tracking it. I think it's a little bit above that. But let's say it's exactly a trillion dollars. And let's say I want a uh, you know I'm an unreasonable guy and I want a like 25% annual return on my capital, for example. You know, Arvind knows my license plate says compound 26. Uh, so, uh, so if I want a 25 or 26 percent return on my money, the first year that business has to produce 260 billion in owner earnings. And um, I don't think that's what Apple is producing right now. I'm not, I'm not quite sure. Uh, maybe some uh, someone in the class knows, uh, or maybe you can look it up, Arvind. Arvind, what is the trailing PE of Apple? Approximately, is it like ten times or something? I think it's uh, higher than that, but I can get it for you. Uh, yeah. So, but let's let's be generous. Let's say it's trading at ten times earnings. Let's say that what it what it's saying is that Apple's making a hundred billion a year. Okay. So, I need two sixty billion for my twenty six percent or twenty five percent. It's making let's say a hundred billion, and then. And then a year from now, let's say let's say it's 115 billion. Let's say I'll give it that you know they've got a rocking market position, earnings grow by 15 percent, it goes to 115 billion. And let's say for the next 10 years it's compounding at 15 percent. Even even with 100 billion in earnings compounding at 15 percent for 10 years, which means that in the 10th year it will be 400 billion. Uh, because in five years it'll double to 200 billion, and 10 years it'll double again to 400 billion. That 10th year 400 billion uh, is not worth 260 billion today, because because you know when I discount that at the 26% rate, I have to it will it will go down below 100 uh, uh, because it's. Uh, uh, just you know, it needs to be doubling every three years and such. So anyway, the bottom line is that if your return expectations are something like seven percent a year, uh, and Apple is growing at you know six seven percent a year or something, uh, it may work. So so one of the one of the things that you can do with just playing with these two, three numbers, which is market cap, current earnings, and what you expect earnings to grow at. And of course, you know, uh, I think a lot of people would have difficulty uh, getting to assumptions that Apple will grow 15% a year, uh, bottom line, for 10 or 15 years uh, without any hiccups. That may happen, it's a very dominant company in a dominant position. But we've seen a lot of past dominant companies have problems in uh, in these areas. So, uh, so the thing is that when I look at something like Apple, it doesn't even take a femtosecond to take a pass. Uh, and now, if we had Apple at like something like three times earnings, you know, like trillion dollar market cap, making 350 billion a year. Growing at whatever you know, 15% or something, even someone like me might get interested. You know, uh, so so the thing is that a PE of three on Apple might get me excited, and uh, a PE of 10, uh, not quite as exciting. And uh, so, Manish, so, ITA is saying that the PE is uh, closer to 20 times, so you're going to be a lot less excited. Ouch, man. That's so hard. <laughs> and uh, and so you know the thing is that uh, you know so if you if you run this same math 
starting at 50 billion, which is where trailing earnings are. And even if you take heroic assumptions of 20% growth unabated, I still can't get to the promised land. You know, as you know, with the commandments, I've been to the promised land, but, but I can't get to the promised land with it. So, so that was the fifth, fifth uh, uh, commandment, thou shall never use Excel. And as you saw with all the math we did, you know, we didn't even need a calculator. Forget Excel. We just did it in our heads. So there is no need for Excel. And if you find yourself reaching for Excel, what that means is, um, is you take a pass. Uh, the, it's an automatic pass the moment you feel, oh, I need Excel to figure this out. If you need Excel, it means you need to take a pass. If you can't do the math on the fingers in one hand, you need to take a pass. If you're going to two hands, there's a problem. You need to be doing the math with one hand and no calculator and watch between your ears, that's it. Uh, like I said, these are all things that Arvind will never talk to you about. It's only me and you that can talk about such things. Um, then commandment number six, thou shall always